Uh, uh, be part of the welcoming committee to the York Guam Museum. And uh, we have a very special presentation. There's a lot of stuff that we're going to be talking about uh, and introducing you to when you, we open these doors and we've got this beautiful ribbon behind me. But before we start, I want to welcome the Acting Governor of Guam, Acting Governor Ray Tenorio. Thank you very much for coming, sir. Also with us today, we have uh, former Senator uh, Tony Abba, I believe, is here. There he is. We have uh, Senator, um, I think, uh, yes, Frank, for, yeah, Frank Duncan Jr. is here, right? So, Senator, there you are. I'm starting to for you. Also, uh, former Senator Frank Bloss, and he has a very special role in all of this. So let's see who's carrying on himself, and uh, and we're real proud to have him here. Also with us today is the uh, uh, chairman of the Guam uh, Department of Tomorrow Affairs, Mr. Joe McDonald. He's here with us. Let's give him a round of applause. And though these are the dignitaries, the real stars today, all our Manoku who are here with us today, give them a big round of applause. Also with us today, we also have uh, Ms. Leona Young, who is the Executive Director of the Guam Museum Foundation. Very big supporter of, uh, of the Guam Museum. Hi, Tomorrow Pride from Colorado. Jeff Bristol and his wife is here. He's got a very special role in this, this whole thing today, as you'll see when you walk in. Let's give Mr. Je Jeff Bristol a big round of applause. Okay, we're going to get this started, and um, I think we have to kick it off with uh, someone who uh, everybody knows, and somebody who has been a driving force in kind of keeping us in, in line and making sure that we're doing what we're supposed to do. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the one, the only, Mr. Johnny Sablon. Well, that's why I have to sing that off the bass song from the Molly Power music. <laughs> I miss you, Flora. Yes. When he shows up in Angu, Guam sees on his sublime. No. Guam, he gave you a winning department to come out with a handsome more. In, well, Guam is the Guam Museum, could totally alter the debates of our village and totally put linguahi and kutura. Pues no, Matuzo Magi Pokok in Akata Celebra. And then is he, he the most greatest generation that Samoro people will ever have? Hanzu Tainamu. Manainamu. Sinapanu. The political chair of Samanana, Taha Hasra, Inha Hasra, historian Nia, the Estigi Pabuna, Molik Sagwa, no Luga, Nasina Tana. The fact that we historia, so we get to go for my good, for my own times, and my mama is last year that for my good. Un storia that that bina tin kada da jeriko no guau na pot ma fanyogun guau na pot kun ma fanyogun kina po gera 1947. Los in and now, as it at all, says so my song and put in me sap me sap it near, you know, ye can put me at a Padewa than ham. Though I have sort of in a half sort after I mean for me, in a half sort of quick. Best in Honor Hansel, Toto Temple, in a half sort of Hansel, Toto Temple. Because Don Cruz is just mostly a potato. Celebrate is the night in them. Biba. Biba! 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 Um, ladies and gentlemen, at this point, I'd like to welcome up a very special guy who's been supporting this Guam Museum and making it uh, move, uh, along with Governor Eddie Calvo. Please welcome up Acting Governor Ray Tenorio. Uh, 
I want to especially thank, uh, I think, one of the driving forces behind this, uh, perhaps far none, uh, my classmate and friend, uh, Senator Frank Bloss, Jr., who did a great job. So thank you. And look at the legacy of people. We think about the purpose that we have. Why are we here? You know, God's put us on this planet, and God put us in the place in our families, and put us on this island. And Frank Bloss, Jr., purpose over the last many years has been to make sure that we emphasize those who have suffered, those who went before us, who created the foundation of which we are standing on now. Johnny Sablan and you know our many families who have come before us and now have grand and great grandchildren. We look on them just like we did at his father, Frank Ross Sr. and the leaders that he was. And we create these things, these photos and these memories and we look back on them and we don't forget because we can't forget, because we have a responsibility to make sure that the suffering that they endured is not for naught. It is not without cause. That we are here to celebrate the freedom that they have suffered to attain for us. That they resisted the Imperial Army of Japan. They resisted 300 years of Spanish tyranny, almost decimating our population. And we have come so far in the generations and Deagle up to now. And so we look at the young and we think to ourselves, Hoku, you are the future. You are the ones who are going to make us more proud. Because the uprising and the Chamorro culture and the customs and the language and the things that we are is a function of our sign, who have suffered and been here and not only deserve war reparations, but deserve our eternal love and make sure that we're always there for them just like Frank Bloss Jr. has done for all the people of Guam by emphasizing those in photos and in articulation and copy and be able to memorialize in now three books about our greatest generation, our grandparents. So this is Frank and all the people of Guam who put this together. God bless you all. And this is I got life. Um, you know, it's not in the program, but I can't, I, it, it's, it's only appropriate that we bring up Senator Frank Blas Jr. to say just a few words. Come on. You've been working so hard at this. Thank you, Cliff. Please. I'm just Frank Blas Jr., but I'm not the foundation. The foundation is all of you that's standing around us. The foundation of people like Joey Franquist. Brenda Sana and her husband Richard, Princess Mary Castro, Mary Ferry, Monica Guzman, who every once in a while we got to remind her she's the Vice President of the Foundation. Okay. <laughs> Senator Albert, Senator Anna, my good friend, and psycho mate, um, acting Governor Ray Tenorio. It's people like Fred Bamba, Flora Baza Kwan, okay, Auntie and Okay, family. Where's Mr. Force Harris? Okay. Just so you guys know, in about two weeks, okay, where Mr. Force Harris is going to showcase his talent in commemoration of our war survivors as a war survivor himself in our gala honoring um, the war survivors in Medal Journey 2. It's all of you. I am just but the figurehead. I'm just but the face. I'm just the individual who has to sign the checks and just not guess. But it's as a result of all of you, the passion that all of you have shared with us, with me, in making sure we want to make sure that our greatest, the, the greatest generation that has ever lived is remembered as that. And we, we perpetuate that, we continue that. Because what they went through we never want to go through ever again. And we have to learn from that. You're gonna hear, you're gonna read and you're gonna see the stories. Please, remember that so that we don't go back to that. Let's make one the, the best place in the world to live. That's what, that's who the foundation is. I'm just the individual that said, let's go, let's do this. But I, I could not have done it without all of you. So I want to thank Cliff, and Monica, and the whole group. They worked tire tirelessly. 
this morning. I never knew that you could use the Swiffer to mop the floor the way they did it. <laughs> it's a beautiful project, but it couldn't have been done without you. So again, thank you very much. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about what you're going to see in there. And to do that, I'd like to uh, I'll bring up somebody who's very shy around the microphone. But um, she has to do it because that's her job. She is the um, museum, the director for the Squaw Museum. And um, she's done an excellent job in keeping the team together. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome up Ms. Dominica Tolentino. Thank you for, thank you everyone. Um, yeah, Cliff's right. I'm not really good at <laughs> speaking spontaneously, so actually, and like everyone else, I actually have my, my notes written down. Um, I hope you'll indulge me so that I can get this right. Buenas, half a day. Thank you and welcome everyone for being here this morning as we celebrate the uh, opening of our new exhibition in Hahasuha. We still remember narratives of history and memory of World War II in Guam. And it's a real honor, and I, I say this sincerely, to have you all here with us today. This exhibition is really full of memories. It's our effort at the museum to offer you a representation of the experience of World War II in Guam and its liberation. As you walk through these doors, you will find photographs and stories and objects that evoke memories of one of the most traumatic periods in Guam's history. We're fortunate to have the photographs from the Horace Bristol Collection on loan to us from the Bank of Guam. Horace Bristol was a photographer for the Navy who came to Guam in August 1944. And he captured a moment in time when the island had just been bombarded by the US, the Japanese had just surrendered, and the people began to rebuild their lives. These photographs will set the context in which you can view the rest of the exhibition. We're also fortunate to be able to display the exhibition put together by the Guam War Survivors Foundation. And we thank uh, Senator Frank Gloss Jr. for his support and his generosity. This exhibition is part of the foundation's Legacy of Faces project, which recorded the oral testimonies of war survivors before these memories were lost to history. But in Hasuha not only gives voice to Guam's war survivors, it also demonstrates the diversity of the experiences and the different ways that people have memorialized the war. Through monuments, memorials, commemorations, exhibitions like this one, books, videos, and photographs, we ourselves engage in history making. These are what we call social acts of remembrance. They help us to transmit the past into the future. They help us to make sense of the past, reconcile with it, and also they act as a way to be lasting reminders when our own memories fade. I myself am the daughter of war survivors. My father was a young man in the Philippines who survived the war there. And my mother was a young girl who survived the war here in Guam. Unlike my father who rarely talked, if ever, about his life during the war, my mother in Guam shared lots of stories with us, which even at age 81, she still remembers quite vividly, even though she often forgets the names of her own grandchildren. <laughs> Still, her name is not on the wall of names. Like many on Guam who never made their stories available to others outside the family, her memories will have to live on for now in me. The memories of my father are already gone, but I hope, like other descendants of survivors, we will take this responsibility to record the stories of our parents and grandparents, keep them alive, and pass them on. Our children and grandchildren will be all the richer from our small efforts. Lastly, I want to thank all of you for, our, for your interest in our exhibition. It is difficult to represent one story, one history, one kind of memory. We all have different interpretations of the past. Some memories we openly share, and some memories are meant to be forgotten. In any case, this, exhibi this exhibition is a call out to all our war survivors that we still remember in Hahasuha, and God willing, we will never forget your story or your sacrifice. Great job, Yeah. 
this is an exercise, right, for all of us. <laughs> no, um, you know, this time now, we're all going to spiritually cut the ribbon together, okay? That's the goal, right? We're all going to cut it together. But we still have to have a physical manifestation of cutting the ribbon. So I'm going to ask our, our acting governor, of course, um, Frank uh, Bloss Jr. to come up, uh, Jerry Saban, uh, Chairman Joe McDonald, could you please join us up here? As well as we have Senator Uggen here, um, former Senator um, uh, Abbott here, and do we have anybody else? Uh, that... Oh yes, Joe from the Bank of Guam, please Joe, come on up. Bank of Guam was so, so generous in loaning us their private collection. Let's give Bank of Guam a big round of applause. And if we can stand back here, and then if we could also have maybe the foundation members stand behind them. As uh, Jeff, Jeff, could you come up and join us, please? I know it's a short rope, but um, you know, we'll all do our best. This is the moment we've all been waiting. Yeah, are, do we have any other VCA board members here? Please come up, Dean. Come on up. This is important. They are doing the physical manifestation, but we are cutting the ribbon together. It's the most important thing that we do it together. Okay, do we have um, enough scissors? <laughs> Jeff? Come on in, Jeff. Jeff's okay. Just, just cut Joe's hair. <laughs> if there's no room at the thing, just cut the hair of the person in front of you. <laughs> Uh, Dominica, where are you? You need to be here too. Museum. Conception Gale. 